charter bus barrels down Route 80 on the second day of a civil rights pilgrimage throughout Alabama. Georgia Congressman John Lewis has traveled these same roads before during starkly different times. Now when we travel through Alabama, we protect it. That was not the case during the Freedom Rides. You didn't know whether we would live or die. By the early 1960s, the Supreme Court had outlawed segregation in public schools, on public buses, and at interstate travel facilities. But despite the rulings, the South was still segregated. On May 4, 1961, 13 student activists boarded a bus in Washington, D.C. and headed toward New Orleans to challenge continued, now unlawful, segregation in the South. They came to be called the Freedom Riders. We tested waiting rooms, lunch counters and restaurants at the bus station. We were prepared to die for what we believed in. The activists were violently attacked as their buses crossed into Alabama. And after a second bloody confrontation in Birmingham, they called off their effort. But the movement at large would not be stopped. Ten of us, ten students from Nashville decided to pick up the ride. That new wave of students, including 21-year-old John Lewis, traveled to Alabama to continue the movement. To prevent further assaults, Attorney General Robert Kennedy sent his assistant, John Siegenthaler, to Alabama to negotiate protection for the travelers. The Freedom Riders were serious. They had a strategy. If you could apply the word model young person to anybody, you'd apply it to those, those children. After initial resistance, Alabama Governor John Patterson ensured the safety of the Freedom Riders as they traveled through the state. I had planned to follow the bus. I wanted to be with them all the way. On May 20th, 1961, as the students reached the Montgomery bus terminal, their police escorts vanished. For Lewis and Siegenthaler, there would be dramatic consequences. An angry mob appeared out of nowhere. Hundreds of people. There was just teeming violence all over there. Those kids were just being pummeled. I was pinned up against the wall with my seatmate. I was hit in the head and knocked unconscious. Siegenthaler tried to shuttle some of the riders to safety. So I blew the horn, bounced up onto the curb, jumped out of the car. A couple of fellows wheeled me around. And uh, I never saw the blow, never felt the pipe. It got me right over the head, and I, I, was, I never remember hitting the ground. A lead pipe fractured Singenthaler's skull. He was kicked under his car and left lying unconscious in the street. You've heard it said, but you never realize that people can be like animals. I, I mean, I will tell you the men and women and children in that mob were like animals. 